Hey guys, want to bring you another YouTube video about the Houston Rockets and Daryl Morey separating. Um, so it happened earlier this afternoon. Was a little surprised when the news came down um, because uh, when Mike D'Antoni got, f uh, well, they he, they said he left mutually, um, which was another unusual and that was very, I would say, very uh, odd timing. I would say. Because the day before he said he was he wouldn't be surprised to be back um, coaching again with the Rockets. Uh, it sounded like he had talks of trying to um, probably uh, get an extension and all that. But just 24 hours, pretty much by the time he hit the uh, tarmac uh, of the airport, and he announced he was going to uh, mutually leave the Rockets. Now, fast forward again. If you haven't seen my video after uh, during that time, I thought, you know what? I think it's time to tear down and pretty much rebuild this Rockets team. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I waited two days just to, because that was my initial thought after they lost to the Lakers. Yes, the Lakers were the eventual team that won the championship, but you pretty much just like the Clippers mortgage your for your future. Um, with a lot of draft picks gone, uh, with Westbrook and Harden, that's why I don't think this job is the most desirable, to be honest, um, at the time. So, that's where I'm kind of, uh, surprised that now, like I said, I'm a fan of Daryl Morey. Um, even though he didn't deliver us the championship, I liked how he approached his job of trying to build a championship caliber team with the roster. Um, because like I said, I've been a Rockets fan since the Hakeem Olajan era, era, um, and so, to, but I was also a Bulls fan of Jordan too, but, the, uh, after Jordan first left, that's where I kind of stopped following the Bulls, just realized I was more of a Jordan fan, but then I kind of like Hakeem Olajuwon as my second favorite player at the time, and I had a fascination of big guys being able to move that way was unbelievable too. Um, what was ironic is they both came from that uh, same draft class. But to get back, it, it, there was that time span where uh, they did, after Olajuwon left, there wasn't too many great teams. Uh, they were average for the most part. But once they got Daryl Morey, um, been there for 13 years, last eight years, made it to the playoffs, um, you knew that, hey, he was going to make this team as well as he possibly could. Um, yes, there was some times where they, they didn't have a good uh, team around him, but he was part of that camp where, like, what, what my mindset is. But I, he thought if you have a 5% chance or 5% window, you should try and make every effort to go and win a championship. Um, again, he was more analytical. Uh, he was, he brought on the analytics. Um, I think that's where the NBA start following that trend. Yes, there was some things I think he could have had to, um, if he had an assistant GM um, that was kind of opposite with him, but knew more of the basketball side of like building chemistry, um, building that culture. He sacrificed all that um, to always chase um, based on his analytics was to get the superstars where you actually needed two superstars to win, um, which it's kind of true. Um, if you look at it, you need at least two or three superstars. And that's where he uh, he knew he had to get the first superstar, which he was able to scout and see the value on getting James Harden. That's where his first building block, and that's where he kept building around there. I, I thought um, that was a genius move to see, hey, they have... They actually had a big three in uh, Oklahoma City, um, but they can't afford because they're a small market. They're not going to be able to pay all three all at once. They're handicapped in that sense. So that's where they kind of like well, well, make that trade. That That's where his brilliance was always there. Um, he always maneuvered in the trades. Um, you got Dwight Howard paired those two together. That didn't work, obviously. But 
then it didn't work with also Chris Paul. It was always like a two year window, but he kept trying to turn and mold the um, uh, roster around James Harden and the coaching style. Now the issue again, that's where I thought to navigate through this right now, I thought Daryl Morey should be here, but I did again say, if you're going to build this and start all over, I, th I thought I'm okay leaving Mike D'Antoni. I'm okay maybe even trading James Harden because I don't know if he was going to be able to bring us over that hump because we've seen that same story. So, I, it's going to be really hard because these are the prime years of Harden and uh, Russell Westbrook. You don't have too many draft picks. It's going to be hard to, uh, with the next GM. He has a Stanford background. Um, he apparently has to play basketball too. So he's probably going to try to um, work on the culture and the winning ways. Now, I just don't know if he's great at negotiating, trying to build. Um, is he going to stick with the small ball lineup? It's going to be interesting. Now, I think there is another thing, again, with the timing. If you, if you saw my last video, this was one of the longest NBA seasons. And this, and that's where some people talked about, like, this is the longest NBA season. If you think about it, last year was the whole scandal or um, with Daryl Morey and Hong Kong and China. And then that's where uh, China's relationship was really choppy and they cut ties with the uh, Rockets and, uh, sponsorship. And then actually said, you know what? We're not going to air your games anymore. So um, they, they lost millions of dollars, probably billions right there easily because of the projected growth. So as Tillman Fitilia, Fitilia um, he is a, a business guy. So if you've seen his show on CNBC, his interviews, um, most entrepreneurs don't like to lose. It's very competitive. So I don't I wouldn't be surprised where he's like, Look, I'm giving you a benefit of doubt. I'm not uh, because he's probably also um like balancing that act with I don't wanna fire you now, don't wanna let you go because it it would be making me look bad as a PR, as an owner, because he was still pretty new as an owner couple years in so I'm gonna give you this chance this year and, and that's maybe why he swung for the fences with Russell Westbrook and wanted to see uh, because he knew his time was coming up and so he had to produce for the new owner and the new owner is very demanding and he's burning through a lot of cash and money right now so for him the timing I wouldn't be surprised if he's probably was told Hey, if you can't produce a championship, I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, save face and actually say you're stepping down or leave on terms on, on your own, just like Matt, uh, Matt, uh, Mike D'Antoni. Um, and so that way it doesn't look like on your resume you were fired or anything. You, you left because he said that he wanted to spend some time with his two adult uh, college kids. And so and explore other opportunities right now the other side of the story i wouldn't be surprised because how much the nba lost this past year if he is going to be blacklisted in the nba so we, we could take a look at this in a year or two to see if that's true because he was a great gm again he was second on the regular season winning uh, percentage wise behind the spurs so that says a lot on how much uh, how much he was able to win during the regular season playoff record i'll give you that's different um so th i think that's another reason why uh ty Lu probably didn't want to go with the rockets um starting job um right now i think it's jeff van gundy there's also some other assistant coaches um i wouldn't be surprised if uh tillman doesn't want to pay the head coach that much either so I think he is trying to cut costs as much as he possibly could, but also try to put a winning product also.
but it's going to be again interesting like i said i think um daryl morey was probably more likely to be forced um out because and especially he might be going to his job like you know what i don't want to be fired i want to be able to get an opportunity out there i still but i i know that a lot of owners are really upset at me because of what happened with the china relationship um supposedly cctv um started playing the nba finals for uh the nba but the ratings were still low so that kind of says a lot still um that maybe they were still maybe not really playing the nba finals over there um and maybe it wasn't a big draw for them so let me know what you guys think uh, of Daryl Morey. Um, I think it's going to be a really tough couple years, maybe, for the Houston Rockets um, because it's going to be really tough to rebuild unless this new GM is able to swing some trades um, and start getting some draft picks back uh, because I don't see how this next new head coach want to play small ball with this roster. You're going to have to get some centers. Um, would be ironic if you could get Dwight Howard since he could probably have a redemption tour uh, with all his previous teams because he did really well with the Lakers. So, and the Rockets really don't have any centers on the roster. Go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. And thanks for watching.